Hello Internet. Today we're going to be working on a 2007 Honda Accord. This particular vehicle has a 3 liter double overhead cam B6 with an automatic transmission. This is a 7th generation Honda Accord. These vehicles were manufactured from the years 2003 to 2007. And the service we're going to do today is unique because most Honda dealers, service riders, and technicians aren't aware of this procedure. If you take your vehicle to them, chances are they're going to tell you that this transmission is sealed for life and does not need any service other than just a, a, the um, fluid changes. However, this filter is serviceable and it can be serviced by someone with reasonable mechanical skills which we're going to demonstrate today and we're going to go through the procedure and the steps needed to change this filter before we get started with the filter um, I went ahead and obtained my radio code also, I went ahead and wrote down my presets so that I can restore everything back to the vehicle just like it was before I started this procedure. I will be removing the battery and the air intake cleaner. So uh, I would like to have everything back the way it was before I started everything. Okay, so now, uh, having removed the air box, um, really does open up a lot of working space here. So, and here's the prize that we're trying to get to. Let me see if I can get a zoom in on it. Get you in closer here. Okay, so here's the 17 mil here's the banjo fitting right here, and there's a 17 millimeter bolt, and I believe there's a washer on, on either end. And here's a 10 millimeter bolt, uh, and here's the ho filter housing right here. This the filter is held in right in there, and there's another 10 millimeter bolt, and I don't know if you can see, but sorry about that. Hang on, way buried underneath there. I don't know if you can even see that. Hang on right there I don't know if you can see it right yeah right below that bolt that other bolt towards the front there's a 10 millimeter bolt way hidden down deep in there so when you remove those three 10 millimeter bolts uh, this housing should come right out and that should um, show us where the filter is also to make things a little bit easier what I'm going to do there seems to be a grounding strap some sort of a grounding strap here for the transmission. I went ahead and loosened this bolt and I loosened this bolt as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bolt out right here um, and I just loosen this bolt. I'm not going to take this out all the way. So I'm going to take this out and then just tilt the strap out of the way just to give me some more um, working space here in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and take this bolt out. It's a 10 millimeter bolt for that strap out and then give myself and then just go ahead and tilt the strap out of the way to give myself some working area so I can get to that filter. Let me just show you what I did here. Um, this strap here um, bolts on there um, by a 10 millimeter bolt and what I did was I went ahead and loosened this bolt right here <coughs> and just just loosened it, not taking it out. But I went ahead and took this bolt out all the way so that I can just get the strap out of the way and just tilt it out of the way just to, just to give me some more room to work with so you know just just so I can uh, move things out of the way and so I can get then take all the bolts out just uh, so I can free up that bolt for that banjo fitting. Um, another thing I also did um, I put a spark plug in here I put an old spark plug in that hole in that coolant um, uh, the heater hose for the throttle body uh, it was just dripping out coolant and I just didn't want to keep dripping out coolant so I went ahead and put some uh, put a spark plug in there just to plug the hole up to keep 
the coolant from dripping. All right. So while we're doing that, so while we're just about there, why don't we go ahead and open up this kit? I have not opened this up. This is the first time I'm opening up this kit for you guys. Let's go ahead and see what's in this. They sold this to me as a kit and it was really a good price actually. Um, let's just see what's in there. Oh, let's see here. Nine, let me see if I can get it to focus here. Come on now, focus for me. Nine four one zero nine twelve thousand, and apparently that is a washer. So you get two washers. So one uh, for the banjo fitting, I believe. So they give you two washers. Okay. Um, they give you a O-ring. Nine one three one ring, and this is the, this is for that um, cover here that goes on top of the house that goes uh, that covers that um, transmission filter housing. Uh, okay, so that's the rubber seal uh, that goes on top of the filter. That's nice. All right, and that's that part number. And last but not least, this is my nice pink filter. And the part number for that is 25450Ray3. And that's a nice pink filter. And I'm guessing, so I'm thinking that this is, that this goes in. And this, this is where that, um, that uh, bolt for the banjo fitting goes in there, I'm guessing. So... So, but this is a nice new pink genuine Honda transmission filter. I think that's all you need. And, um, the rest is just paperwork. So just basically one. So basically you have one, two, three. Just basically five items. I believe there's a spring inside that housing. Um, this kit doesn't come with it. Uh, I don't think you need to replace that spring in that housing um, generally. I don't think there's a need for that. I guess it just puts pressure and holds uh, the uh, filter against from the from the body um, onto that lid, that uh, cover uh, from the back of the transmission. I don't think you need to replace that. Um, so now having done all this, let's go ahead and start taking apart. Um, Let's get, into the, let's get into the meat of this work here by going and taking off that banjo bolt, that banjo fitting bolt. And then let's go ahead and take her off the covers and start taking the housing apart, shall we? Okay. So now what I did, I went ahead and stuffed some paper towel in there before I start taking things apart. And let's go ahead and start by taking off the 17 millimeter bolt. I'm going to get my 
I'm gonna go ahead and get my mag. Let's see if I can pull it out of there. Just one second here, hang on. Okay, uh, I have my magnet here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop it down there, pick up on that. Oop, not there. Not there, come on. Right there. There we go. Come on. I don't think the thing is magnetic. Hang on, guys. Okay, so what I had to do, I had to go in there with uh, both hands actually to fish this out. This washer that was against the housing, um, I guess both washers, this thing is not magnetic. Uh, it's an aluminum type washer and it's like a crush washer. And as you can see, it's, it's got a little, um, little thing on there, I guess. I don't know which direction to put the new one on, but we'll figure it out. It's got some, it's like a crush washer in it, and apparently when you tighten it, it made some sort of a sealing type deal. But it's an aluminum washer. It does not come up with a pickup magnet, so don't bother trying to do that. It didn't work. And as you can tell, I put it on my magnetic holder. It's not sticking to it. It's just wiggling around there. So it is not a magnetic washer. Okay, well, I think that freed up some space here. Now, this wire out of here. So, here's one bolt here. Drop block there. 
I'm just doing this right feel. I can't see either, believe me. It's okay. I, I, I can't see what's going on anymore than you can. Voila! Here's that boat. Here's the prize. This is what everybody was complaining about. Okay? And so the next thing all I have to do is take out these two boats. It's raining out there big time. Alright, anyway. So, let me show you how I got this filter out or what worked for me. Basically, this is a two-handed job. You, you, you're not going to be able to get the filter out of the housing with one hand. So, what I had to do, uh, this banjo fitting right here, I pushed down on it and then I was able, uh, after Sorry, I push it towards the towards the firewall, towards the um, fender here, and I push down on it. Uh, as I push down on it, uh, I was able to get this filter out and just slide it out of there. But it's a two-handed job; it's not possible to do it with one, one hand. So let's take a look at my filter here. And surprisingly, 
uh, I've seen much worse. My filter, I don't know how well it's coming through on this camera here. here there you go. It actually looks pretty clean. My filter is actually in really good condition. There's that rubber grommet there. But overall, my filter looks pretty good. You know, I don't even think it needs to be changed. This is a 10 year old car, and I have kept up on the maintenance of this vehicle. And overall, I'm overall pretty much pleased with the way this filter looks. Um, I actually think this, this filter could go for, I don't know, maybe three, four years. I don't know, by the looks of it. Um, it doesn't even look like it needs to be replaced. Um, so, why don't we go in and, and okay, there, there's also a spring there, but I'm not going to take it out. Just let me just take it out and show it to you guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reuse the spring. Um, it feels pretty good, and my kit didn't come with one. My understanding is that you don't need to change the spring. Uh, I'm guessing that what this spring does is it pushes here, right here, uh, from the back of the housing and holds it uh, to that um, to the cover, I guess, of what a filter does. But uh, I am not going to replace my spring. I'm just going to go ahead and reuse it. I mean, even my filter looks good, so I don't see the reason to replace the spring, so I'll just go ahead and put it back in. There seems to be like a little um, place for it to go into, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in there. I'm just feeling it. I can't see anything. I can't see back into that housing. I'm just doing this all by feel. So if, you, if you can't see, I can't either. I can see just as much as you can. Okay, so that spring is back in place. So let's go ahead and take all the new components and let's assemble them together and get them ready to go to start uh, reassembling things back in the car. Okay, so let's go ahead and start reassembling things back together in the car. Um, I have my filter here uh, with the grommet in there. I have my three 10 millimeter bolts washers and my cover for the transmission housing so, and the uh, 17 millimeter bolt. So all my stuff is right here. Let's go ahead and start assembling things back together in the car, shall we? Oh man, it is coming down. Oh, you know what? I might not be able to get this filter back on you guys with holding this camera. I have to put you guys down, put you on pause here while I get this filtered up. Basically what I'm going to do, I'm just going to push down on this, get that out of the way, and get that into that housing. Basically all I'm going to do is get this, get this filter in that housing. This, is the, this, will, this will go towards the uh, passenger side and this is the driver's side, so this is where that bolt is going to come out of. And just, um, I guess the oil comes here, all the dirt collects here and comes out of this part here and goes out of that bolt, and goes into that bolt, I guess. Okay, so let me put you down and put this filter in the, into that uh, transmission housing. Turn the camera around here. Hang on, sorry. So the filter is back in the housing as you can tell it's back in where it needs to be and also this is that little notch i was talking to you about so this is on the top of the car so i'm going to put that cover back on uh, aligning it up to that little notch right there okay Switch hands. 
notes here. Mm, there we go, squeeze. Ugh. <laughs> okay, so as I'm squeezing it in, it just wants to come out. I think that spring is just wanting to put pressure on it, make it come out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and put my 10 mil start my 10 millimeter bolts. And I guess that's the only way to get it to stay in there. I don't know. As I try to squeeze it in, it just wants to come right back out. I'm going to start with the one towards the front of the car. Bring one to the front of the car in first. Going in pretty easy, just so you know. It's, and then you see these marks are lined up. Okay. And let's get that one towards the back. Going in pretty easy, actually. No issues whatsoever. And I want to make sure I get to try to get the bottom one for all of you guys, because I've seen a lot of people complain that that's the hard one. So let's just see how hard it really is, shall we? Don't worry, I can't see either. I want to get that little thing out of the way. I'm going to lift up on it. Yes. And it's not easy doing it with if I had probably two hands or something, it'd probably be a little bit easier, I guess. I don't know. Doesn't look easy either way. I think I got it. Just doing it by feel, you guys. There you go. I don't know if you can see this or not, but... It's in there, believe me. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can show you. I just had to put it in there, feel it in. But yeah, it's tightening it. I, I can I can feel it going in. And I guess we just tighten it now. I, I guess um, I just I, you know, I just tighten up this housing. And uh, let, let's see what happens. Oh, by the way, my camera battery is running a little low, so I'm going to cut you guys off here. And I'm just going to go ahead and take my uh, Genius Tools uh, zero offset wrench and I'm just going to go ahead and tighten up these, these three 10, 10 millimeter bolts here and just put the housing back in and then we'll come back and then we'll finally do these two fittings, all right?
do was go in there and um, turn it quarter turn like this each time to get it tight. And also this this one will also and this one will also fit this one on top. So as you can tell, it's all tight. It's tight. That's tight. That's tight. So all three of them are tight. Um, on. So now what I need to do is I'm going to put my this banjo fitting. I'm going to put it on. And see this tab right here on the on the housing. I think what this does. I think this this line sits on top of this tab right there. I guess it just supports this line. So what I'm going to do when I put it back on, I'm going to put this line back on this tab right there to support it. And then uh, I have two washers. So one of the washers will go into the screw. Let me show you. I'm going to put one washer in the screw. Okay. And once I put this screw in um, into my fitting here, um, into this fitting here. I'm going to put the other washer on this end here before I put it into the housing. So there'll be two, just like it came out, there'll be two washers. One against, one on, uh, one on the head of this bolt and one past, um, one right here like by the threads and that little uh, hole for the uh, uh, transmission fluid flow. Okay, so it's going to be two of them. So once I put that, put the 17 millimeter back on, the next thing I'll do is go ahead and put back my uh, grounding strap, which is hidden somewhere, which decided to hide somewhere back here, right there. So my grounding strap, I'm going to go ahead and put that ground strap back in. Uh, this, you know what? This is optional. Uh, I just went ahead and took it out of the way. If you if you're going to do this, um, it's it's up to you. I mean, it it just I just did it because I just wanted to stuff have stuff out of the way uh, to make it easier. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put my 17 millimeter bolt back on and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, put the ground strap on. Let's go ahead and get that going. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. That bolt is there. Now I need to put my washer on this end. I'm kind of nervous doing this with one hand. I just, I'd rather do it with two hands, but it is what it is. All right, there you go. Now let's put it back into the housing. Alright you guys, I think I'm going to do this with two hands. Let me go ahead and tighten this bolt up and then let me go ahead and put the ground strap back in and I will come back and show you the end result of doing all that. Alright, so let me show you what I did. Uh, I went ahead and put back the banjo fitting, the 17 millimeter banjo fitting. Um, uh, the, the washer on either side, okay, um, and then I replaced my uh, ground straps. That's replaced, and that's replaced. Um, so let me just show you how I tightened up the. Um, so again, I took my 17 millimeter um, uh, zero offset wrench, and then just tightened it up that way with the. 
tightened up that fitting. Uh, I, I threaded threaded this thing in. It, it takes both hands to do this, by the way. You can't do it with one hand. So uh, I, I threaded this bolt in all the way. It'll go by hand. Um, pretty much went in all the way pretty easily. No, no, no terribly, not, not terribly difficult. Pretty much went in all the way by hand. And, and then after that, just snug it up with this wrench. And then after I snugged it up, I went ahead and put back the grounding strap. So we're pretty much done. We're pretty much in the home stretch. So the only thing left to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put back on the air box and then the battery. Uh, I didn't have to mess with the fuse box. I didn't even have to take this apart or move this out of the way. So it, it's not necessary. It's just there's plenty of room. Once you take out the battery and the air box, there's going to be you're going to find that there's plenty of room to work here. Uh, that was my experience. Uh, and again, the only the, the real difficult part of this whole job, I think many people have talked about this on other uh, web sites, is that bottom bolt right there in that housing, in that three bolt uh, cover for that housing. That's the, that was just probably the most difficult part of this whole job. Other than that, everything in this job, I would say, was pretty straightforward and not too terribly difficult. All right, so now with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and put back on the air box and I'm gonna go ahead and put on the battery. One. So here's what I did. I got the car up on ramps and so let's go take a look at the car from underneath. I don't see any leaks. Let me show you what I'm seeing. So let's go underneath here. Be a little tough but let me see if I can get you in there to get you a good view here. A good shot here. Let's see what I see. And if you look right there See that 17 millimeter bolt? Um, sorry. That's the 17 millimeter bolt that I took off, and that's the housing. And if you look around there, uh, you're not going to see any leaks. So it looks pretty good. Looks like everything is going okay here. I don't see any leaks around the bolt or housing or any of those places. Let me see if I get you to zoom in here a little bit here. Let me see if I can do that. Let's see if I can get a better view here. Alright. Right there. If you look around that area there, you'll see there's not a drop of transmission fluid coming out. So I think we're okay. I don't see any leaks and everything. Uh, I'm going to call this job done because I looked underneath the car and everything. I don't see a drop of transmission fluid coming out. Sorry about that.